with Nick here, hope you guys are doing well. And if there is one thing that I wish for you to take away from this video, it's that deterministic machines do not imply or warrant perfection. And you'll see why, because today we're gonna talk about self-driving cars and more specifically, what we can learn from Uber's recent self-driving fatality. After hearing news of the tragic death caused by one of Uber's self-driving vehicles, I fought this reactionary fear to quickly criticize the company and its weakening handle of its meteoric growth. Obviously, tons and tons of pages can be written about Uber's generally questionable practices, but I thought that to choose sides and ascribe blame in this circumstance would not only marginalize Elaine Herzberg's death, but also diminish the opportunity to learn a little bit more about the reliability of autonomous vehicles, especially relative to that of their human-driven counterparts. So today, I'm gonna to challenge myself to answer the weighty, contentious dilemma of whether or not we should trust these machines in the wake of tragedies like this. Let's check it out. Because this is such a dense topic, I'm gonna ask a couple of guiding questions to help keep me on track. So one, is the alleged safety of self-driving cars fraught with empty speculation and lacking data, or can we point to tangible evidence of its comparative superiority? And second, should state governments address the apparent laxity in their driverless car regulations, or are such agreeable conditions necessary to eventually prevent more prominent human-induced road accidents? Firstly, I think that such a conversation must begin with a scrutiny of autonomous vehicle statistics as well as the contentious determinism that underlie them. Okay, now I'm gonna get into a bit of stats and math, so if you ever wanna check my numbers, I highly encourage you to click the link down below. It's gonna take you to my newsletter piece on this very topic. I'm way more specific, I check all the links, and I also walk through the math step by step. So click it, read it, subscribe if you get the chance. Okay, back to where I left off. In the US alone, car crashes accounted for 32,000 deaths and over two million injuries per year. And of that already staggering quantity, over 90% resulted from human error. Evidently, we are faced with the hard-nosed certainty that driving implies danger, in many ways due to the innate ceiling of being human, right? We make mistakes, we're not always focused, stuff happens. Autonomous vehicles, on the other hand, are never drunk, distracted, or tired, and those three states of mind account for 53.5% of all fatal crashes. Moreover, autonomous vehicles and their binary, inevitable decision-making prove undeniably better in matters of parallel parking, general maneuvering, and even collision avoidance. In a broader sense, however, these discussions don't appear to impugn the eventual supremacy of self-driving vehicles. The prevailing narrative is clear. They will come to supplant the technical, physical, and mental limitations of humans behind the wheel. But figuring out what day that might be is really tough, and the answer is that it will for years be draped in ambiguity. Here's why. In order to truly understand how autonomous vehicles fare against their human-driven counterparts, a lot more miles have to be driven. How many? That's an interesting question, and it often leads to some erroneous conclusions about how we perceive the safety of autonomous vehicles. In my opinion, it is very lazy to suggest that simply because an autonomous vehicle kills one person in five or six years of testing, and human-driven cars kill 32,000 people a year, oh, autonomous vehicles must be undeniably safer, right? No, and that's because data and population sizes and sample sizes mean everything. Americans drive on average three trillion miles per year and autonomous vehicles are nowhere near that quantity. So now we have the very hard hitting question of how many more miles need to be driven by autonomous vehicles to make a justifiable comparison. Researchers Nidhi Kalra and Susan Paddock sought to do exactly that and their findings are less than promising. They say that we're going to need to do 8 billion miles of driving behind the wheel of an autonomous vehicle if we're ever going to make reasonable comparisons. And for a bit of reference, if 100 autonomous vehicles were driving 24-7, 365 days a year at 25 miles per hour, it would take 400 years to produce meaningful results. And again, if you're ever curious to how we got those numbers, please click the link down below where I walk you through all of the math and numerical analysis that was done. 
If these observations have taught us anything, it's that we can't drive ourselves to safety in the Wild West phase of autonomous vehicles. That much should be clear. There are simply too many miles to be driven. So as a result, while computers and machine learning algorithms may not warrant perfection, they must demand an incredible level of regulation. Legislative permissiveness, haphazard company handouts, and general misconduct like having a delirious backup driver will only add fuel to the fire that will burn the dream of an automated metropolis. Self-driving cars will subsume global economies before their safety is fully corroborated. And it seems a little bit dangerous knowing that we are smack dab in the middle of a conversion to a social and economic schema that is governed by machines. States like Arizona have bet really big on this reality, and they've given free reign to tech companies to bring driverless tech out and have it roam the streets in the hopes that that means more jobs and statewide innovation. Though pilot studies are a very important intermediary measure to understand the technology of our times, it's interesting because I think that underperforming technology along with lacking regulation has produced a systematic process for failure, distrust, and unfortunately, sometimes tragedy. Ultimately, evidence of our behavior behind the wheel posits the need for assistive technology. Autonomous vehicles and their development have been undeniably impressive, and with exhaustive testing and strict regulation, I think we can most certainly learn from the setback of misfortune. All of this granted that lawmakers prioritize the safety of their citizens over massive profit margins, and that is often the cloven foot of all technological progress in the world. As always, thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. Check my newsletter down below if you want more information and you want to learn a little bit more. But thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.